Fascinating, Gary. Uh, if you start with team use, how's Marcos Sanesi? Uh, yeah, Marcos has done okay this week. Um, yeah, he's been back in training for a couple of days, passed a few of the checks. Um, so, yeah, expect him to be okay for tomorrow. Um, no, same as we were really. So, um, Lloyd Kelly not back yet. Ilya not back yet. Um, who else have we got? David Brooks and Lewis Cook. Um, they'll still be out, but rest of the group's in a in a decent place. You came so close to ending that winless run against Newcastle last week. Now the dust has settled on it. Just how encouraged are you with that performance? Yeah, encouraged, but um, we, we we need to we need to move on and make sure we progress again this week. So um, yeah, there, there's been some signs over recent weeks, um, but yeah, signs won't keep you up. So um, we, need, we need to make sure we take some points as well. Um, I think the last three games, probably Nottingham Forest, Brighton, and Newcastle. My overall feeling with the performance has been positive, um, and. We, you feel close to have taken seven points from them, but you only have two. So um, that, that that needs to change. Especially that last game, was that a sign that maybe things were starting to click? You've got the new signings, you've got players coming back from injury. Is that more the sort of performances you're looking at going forward now, like with, with all those players back? Yeah, I think no, no matter what situation you're in, having more good players available to you will always be will always benefit the team. So... Um, yeah, we're we're in a place now where we have more good players available. Um, obviously, that leaves me some decisions to make. Um, but we are, as I thought we would be, in a better place at the end of January than we were at the start, squad-wise. Um, and we are starting to get some some key players back from injury. Um, still a few to go, but yeah, we're we're getting closer. Some teams around you in the table are in a bit of sort of semi-crisis. Leeds and Southampton don't have a manager. Is it important while there is that uncertainty at those clubs that you sort of take advantage with the sort of settled status that you've got here? Um, I don't, f yeah, I don't focus on any of the stuff that's going on at other football clubs. Um, I think I have a real clear focus on our group um, and how we approach each game. Um, and this week will be a tough one. Wolves have, have have been very good recently. Had some good results, some good performances. Um, surprised that they were as low in the table as they were before their good run with the players that they have they have some real especially attacking wise some real quality players um, so it'll be a very tough game at Wolves regardless of what's going on at other football clubs then it's not going to change that and, and the run that you're on since the World Cup you talk about it every week but do you feel under any pressure at all do you feel like you've, now, now you've got these players back as well from, inj from injury and you've got those new signings in? Do you kind of feel like you'll be judged from this point when you've got your fully fit squad? I'm happy to be judged always. I'm happy to be judged on the work that's been done. I'm happy to be judged on the work that's going to be done. I fully understand the role, um, understand where we are as a football club. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I will always be judged. Um, I don't expect that to change from game to game. Um, and my, my aim is to, to keep the club in the Premier League. Um, to pick up some good results and and hopefully that can that can continue and, and be a positive one this weekend. Yeah, and obviously things have changed here over the last few months. When Bill Foley came in, he described himself as the dictator. How much do you then talk to him? How often do you speak to him? How often do you check in with him? Um, most of my contacts with Richard Hughes and, and Neil Blake, uh, mainly Richard, to be fair. Um, but yeah, we kept in, keep in touch with, with everything that's going on. Um, but yeah, mainly, as I say, mainly with, with Richard. Yeah, and just finally for me, I realise every game in the Premier League is tough, everything like that, but you've got City coming up, Arsenal, Liverpool. Wolves are obviously close to you in the table, so how important would that be to get a result tomorrow? How much of a boost would that be? Yeah, I, f I feel like if every Friday I sit and have the same chat and same conversation, the, the next game always feels huge. Um, so yeah, you can talk about Man City being the next one and or that one's not as big as Wolves because of where Man City are. But I guarantee you next Friday, Man City will feel like a big game to me. So, um, yeah, Wolves is a massive game at this time. We'll give it our best, make sure we take something from it. And then next week we'll feel the same, I'm sure. All right. Gary, we obviously saw a, a lift on the pitch. The fans saw it last Saturday. Have you noticed now the new signings were settled in, an extra fizz in your players on the training ground? Team spirit, dressing room culture. Have you noticed any significant improvement in those areas? Yeah, I think training. Yeah, there's been a. You've seen a an, an improvement in in training. Obviously, because we have more more players now. Um, 
more good players as well. So, yeah, the, the level of training has stepped up a notch. You can see that there's a little bit more competition for places, even for places on the bench. Because, you know, bef obviously a few weeks ago we were naming three of the three of the young lads at times on the bench. So, yeah, there's a there's a competitiveness to the squad, um, which is healthy. You know, it it needs to be that way every at every moment in every position. The person that holds the shirt should feel under pressure from the person behind them pushing them for it. Um, so we are, we're in a better place at, from that point of view at the moment. Um, yeah, and I've, I've see, seen an increase in levels. Um, just need to obviously make sure that translates to, to points. We know, as you just mentioned, you, you see every game is important, but the gap between you and Wolves, who are one of those teams just outside the bottom three, by five o'clock tomorrow, could be two points, could be eight points. Do those numbers mean that this one you know, it, it does have a big relevance in the table, even though you say the 90 minutes is just as important as next week's. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think as you get nearer the end of the season, maybe, and there's only, let's say, if you were only trying to catch Wolves, then the difference between you and Wolves would be important, obviously. Um, but to me, that the three points that we can add tomorrow is bigger than anything, bigger than any gap. Um, so, yeah, just a, a real focus on going to, to Wolves to make sure we come away with three points, doing everything that we need. Performance-wise, um, trying to swing some some fine margins in our favour. Um, stuff we've worked quite hard on this week. Um, yeah, and, and seeing if we can put in a, a decent performance and take some points away from home. Wolves, of course, will always be indelibly inked into your managerial career because it was your first game as a Premier League manager. Uh, way back, of course, that nil-nil draw. What are your memories of, of that day and how much do you recognise from maybe the manager that took charge of that game in a hurry with a couple of days to prepare compared to where you are sat there now? Yeah, it was very different. Um, was different, I think, yeah, a day maybe to prepare. Um, so, yeah, I can't remember much about it. I think Wolves are very similar, actually, in style. They've had unique, really, because they've had three different managers, but haven't really switched styles at all. So um, you would expect to see that. I mean, there are a few small differences, but they're very, very similar. Um, so, yeah, there's been a, obviously a lot more prep gone into this one than there was that day. Um, but, yeah, it's been... It's been an enjoyable journey. Um, keen for it to end in a in a positive way by the end of the season. And there's a there's a lot of hard work still to be done between between now and that point to to make sure we are successful. Always by trial and error process. How much do you feel you've developed as a manager since that that man that stood still on that Wolves touchline earlier in the season? Um, yeah, I mean, you guys have helped me. Obviously, a lot of awkward questions that you enjoy asking. So hopefully, <laughs> I've got slightly better at answering those. Um, still wish that we could win every game as I did back then um, you know the first six games that you take uh, we, you go unbeaten and um, probably don't realise what a big achievement that was at the time um, because we, will, we were still short at times there we did still have some, some injuries we did still have some players missing um, and we were off the back of a really bad run so yeah that six game unbeaten run um to where we are now I've obviously learnt a lot I have um, and I'm still very very clear on, on what I expect from this group and we've spoke about it a lot now that we're a group that is um, is stronger that we've recruited well that we have players back from injury there's a real expectation on, on the players from my part to, to start producing performances that lead to results so um, yeah that, that that's where I expect us to get to in the well starting from this weekend and between now and, and May we, we need to start to put results on the board now for the really awkward questions, here's Neil Perrett. Just a quick one, uh, Gary. The uh, under-18s won the EFL Youth Alliance on Tuesday to cap a, a fine season for Alan Connell and, and now Dan Carroll. Yeah, fantastic for them. Um, they, they, they play a big part in helping us as well. To be fair, they always come up and provide the, the boys for, for football matches. Under-18s come up and help us out a lot if we need to do any tactical stuff. Um, and yeah, obviously they producing some real good players as well so a lot of hard work that goes in um, exciting times as well for them obviously with the, the the investment in the club and what the academy is hoping to look like in the next few years um, so yeah some some real good work and yeah delighted for the boys to have a, a successful evening on Tuesday.